Hi everybody, it's January 29, 2019. This is a very good article. I'm going to read a lot of it, but you don't have to listen to me. You can click on the link below and read it yourself. I want to read this because it really shows who Americans have become and where our society is today. And well, it is uh, disturbing, it is deceiving, deluding, and distracting. What Huxley teaches is that in the age of advanced technology, spiritual devastation is more likely to come from an enemy with a smiling face than from one whose countenance exudes suspicion and hate. When a population becomes distracted by trivia, when cultural life is redefined as a perpetual round of entertainments, when serious public conversation becomes a form of baby talk, when in short a people become an audience and their public business a vaudeville act then a nation finds itself at risk. A culture death is a clear possibility. That from Neil Postman, who wrote a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death, Public Discourse in the Age of Show Business. And it was published 1985. 1985. Technological advances have given the masses the false impression their lives have gotten better, when in reality the technology has enslaved and controlled them while providing a never-ending distraction from reality, critical thinking, and the truth. This goes hand in hand with the video that I just posted with YouTube their next tactic to get rid of truth and videos that might well turn on critical thinking that critical thinking in people's brains Americans no longer talk to each other. They entertain each other. They do not exchange ideas. They exchange images. They do not argue with propositions. They argue with good looks, celebrities, and commercials. Or they argue with insults. With virtually everyone in America having access to the internet, smartphones containing more computing power the NASA used to launch rocket ships into outer space, and the proliferation of computers, even in the poorest school districts, the masses should be more intelligent and informed than previous generations. But nothing could be further from the truth. Technology is wasted on people who haven't been taught to think critically, have been indoctrinated by government-run schools to be subservient cogs in the machine, and believe feelings and emotions are more important than knowledge and understanding. The proliferation of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, has resulted in the dumbing down of human interactions and replacement of discussing issues with virtue signaling, selfies, faux manufactured outrage, and glorifying shallow celebrities were addicted to technology. It is incomprehensible our society has embraced technology for amusement, trivialities, and superficial displays of diversion rather than advancement of knowledge, proliferation of ideas, 
and cultural progress and enrichment. The works of Aristotle, Socrates, Shakespeare, Dickens, Twain, Tolstoy, Steinbeck, Orwell, Huxley are available with one click of your eye gadget, but instead the masses choose to play Angry Birds, Candy Crush, and Madden while worshiping at the altar of Kardashian. I don't know what those games are, but I have seen neighbors glued to their cell phones doing something, and I've asked what they are playing is Candy Crush. Adults. Okay. So much knowledge and wisdom at your fingertips. Guaranteed to make you smarter and 99.9% .9 choose to amuse themselves into a stupor of ignorance. Are we just a society of intellectual lightweights driven by emotions and sensitivities? Yeah. Yeah. But he goes on to question, or is this infinite infant infantilism, sorry, infantilism designed and implemented by those controlling the culture through their own ownership of all media platforms. It appears to be a purposeful, deliberate strategy implemented by the ruling class to dumb down the masses through the public education indoctrination system, divert their attention and thoughts through modern day electronic bread and circuses, enslaving them in debt, and pillaging global wealth and power through control of the political, financial, and mass media structures. And now they utilize the technology to spy on you and make sure you are not contradicting the establishment narrative. They don't want a citizenry who understands what is going on, how to think critically and question the establishment or live within their means. They want obedient consumers who believe what they are told by authorities and are just smart enough to follow the rules laid down by their superiors. A nation built on illusions, delusions, disinformation, and confusion. Neil Postman wrote this, Television is altering the meaning of being informed by creating a species of information that might properly be called disinformation. Disinformation does not mean false information. It means misleading information, misplaced, irrelevant, fragmented, or superficial information. Information that creates the illusion of knowing something, but which in fact leads one away from knowing. With the advent of the internet, what should have been a vast awakening and enlightenment of the masses has just been a degradation to the lowest common denominator. Social media platforms have eliminated thought, conversation, seriousness, knowledge, intelligence, and clarity from the public square and replaced it with narcissism, vitriol, virtue, signaling, triviality, attacking anyone with a different viewpoint, and self-promotion. Now that the Silicon Valley social media uh, behemoth corporations have hundreds of millions addicted to amusing themselves to death, they can decide what is acceptable speech. Yeah, and that is what YouTube is doing with their latest tactic. They want you to watch the fluff, not watch anything that will get you thinking, that will get you engaged in the public square, which well, 
the internet, it could have been a public square. Yeah, they can decide what is acceptable speech and that which doesn't conform to their left-wing views. Censorship, public shaming, manufactured outrage, and destroying those with an alternative point of view is now in the control of a small cabal of extremely rich men. They use contrived incidents like the Covington High School kids threatening a noble Vietnam vet Native American in a blatant attempt to spin their web of deceit. Their te technological control over public discourse is a threat to our freedom of speech and to our society. Anyone who thinks for themselves is in danger of becoming an outcast and or cyber criminal in our new dystopian existence. It's here. We're living it. It's not coming. It has manifested. It's only going to get more dark and dystopian. This is what Neil Postman said in 1985. For in the end, he was trying to tell us what afflicted the people in Brave New World was not that they were laughing instead of thinking, but that they did not know what they were laughing about and why they had stopped thinking. Neil Postman published his book in 1985, which was one year after the 1984 that, um, oh God, <laughs> yeah, oh, not Huxley, but Orwell, my God, um, my brain was reaching for it. Yes, Orwell wrote about Postman, who was essentially comparing Huxley and Orwell, will we be living 1984 or Brave New World? So Postman's book was published in 1985, one year after the title of Orwell's chilling view of the dark and brutal dystopian future. Postman's view at the time was Huxley's Brave New World dystopia had proven to be the more accurate assessment of the future. And he was probably right 34 years ago, but not right today. He accurately assessed how the masses had been trained like Pavlov's dogs to follow their emotions rather than their intellect. The average person actually thinks they are informed when they have been programmed by disinformation peddled by the corporate media at the behest of the oligarch masters. Ignorance is not strength. War is not peace. Freedom is not slavery. The misleading information, superficial, irrelevant, fake news, is designed to create the illusion of knowledge when, in reality, it leads you away from knowledge. Postman didn't think the dumbing down of Americans was deliberate. He attributed it to TV entertaining rather than informing. Those in control of the levers of society have made a calculated effort to convince the masses their willful ignorance is actually knowledge. The ignorant are much easier to manipulate and lead down any path necessary to benefit those in charge. Accumulating wealth and power is much easier when the masses can't think and understand basic mathematical truths or comprehend reality. Postman compared the two dystopian visions. Huxley's Brave New World, contrary to common belief, even among the educated, Huxley and Orwell did not prophesy the same thing. Orwell warns that we will be overcome 
by an externally imposed oppression. Huxley's vision, no big brother is required to deprive people of their autonomy, maturity, and history. As he saw it, people will come to love their oppression, to adore the technologies that undo their capacities to think. Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who would want to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal bumble puppy. As Huxley remarked in Brave New World Revisited, the civil libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny failed to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions. In 1984, Orwell added, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, they are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared that what we fear will ruin us. Huxley feared that what we desire will ruin us. Yeah. Can you see how we are? Exactly what this, the author of this article is saying. And it's very sad. It really is very sad. In 1985, TV was still the overwhelming method of information and entertainment for the average person. People still had newspapers and magazines delivered to their homes. Cable news had just launched. The internet was not in widespread use. Home computers were in their infancy. Cell phones for every person was a distant dream. The unseen psychological manipulation of the masses, as described and practiced by Edward Bernays and his sycophants, was far more effective in molding minds, designing the culture, and forming the ideas of the masses without them realizing they were nothing but lab rats in a grand experiment. Propaganda works. Since 1985, the technological control over the masses has deepened and overwhelmed any resistance to its creeping governance of our daily lives. The proliferation of computers 24-hour cable TV and smartphones for the masses has given the unseen manipulators of the public mind, known as the invisible government, the ultimate tools for engineering our minds and deciding what will be perceived as the central beliefs guiding our daily lives. We have come to love our oppression and learned ignorance, adoring the very technologies enslaving us in trivialities, disinformation, shallow displays of virtue, signaling, and eliminating our capacity to think. The masses have passively acquiesced to their oppressors by allowing technology to completely control their lives and form their opinions. The corporate mass media through social media platforms, the internet and TV overwhelm the masses 
with useless information designed to distract and divert our attention from the subversion, sub, subversive actions of the wealthy oligarchs pulling the strings behind the technological curtain. The truth has been and continues to be hidden behind an avalanche of irrelevant minutia and nonsense and spewing from our screens. This garbage into the minds of the masses play to the lowest common denominator by producing disinformation designed to amuse, provoke fear, confuse, inflame desires, and kindle emotions. And with the masses, when you try to lift them up, all they want to do is drag you down with them. They mostly certainly don't want citizens thinking critically, questioning the status quo, ignoring their dictates, discussing the real issues and problem confronting the country or generating ideas which could undermine their control and potentially reduce their vast riches. The brave new world method of control has worked for decades, but the propagation of websites appealing to critical thinkers and those questioning the approved narrative has endangered this command and control structure of the deep state. That is why our society is now, well, I'd say it started very soon after 9-11. 2001, the devolving towards Orwell's vision of the future. Technology is now becoming the boot stomping on our faces forever. The tyranny being inflicted upon the masses by the likes of Google, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, YouTube, and other tech behemoths, um, and I think I just pronounced that wrong, well, on behalf of their deep state benefactors, is chilling in its depth and depravity. The oppression from the current day big brothers through censorship, banning of truth tellers, demonetization of those who don't conform and public shaming of dissenters has replaced the soft tyranny of mental manipulation. The establishment now openly suppresses the truth through their control of all mainstream media channels and outlets. The alternate media is scorned and ridiculed as conspiracy theorists, nut jobs, Russian collaborators, the level of fake news vomited by deep state propagandists has reached a new level of hysteria. Dissenting viewpoints are crushed through economic penalties inflicted upon those who dare go against the approved doctrine of the state. The use of technology to control the minds of the masses has produced unintended consequences which threatens the power of the party. A true surveillance state, more comprehensive than Orwell ever conceived, is operating in full view. Trying to lock down the internet has proven to be difficult for the ruling class as more and more critical thinking, pissed off citizens congregate on truth telling websites and stir discontent among the awakening masses. There is an all-out technological war being waged between the corporate oppressors and those they are trying to control. The current escalation will surely lead to all-out violent war in the foreseeable future. Huxley's soft tyranny, where we have been conditioned to obey and never consider revolution, is being replaced by Orwell's vicious tyranny where 
persecution, torture, and power will be on full display as this revolution begins in earnest. Huxley and Orwell were both right. The party doesn't care about us. They just use us to attain their own felonious needs. They need to break free from the chains enslaving our minds and take back our country by force. We need to break free. We need to break free and take back our country by force. Time is growing short. Will we meekly accept the fate of Winston Smith and John the Savage inflicted by the state? Or will we rise up against the technological tyranny oppressing our freedoms and liberties? The answer, the answer, the answer will decide our fate. And it looks like we are meekly going to accept the fate of Winston Smith and John Savage, John Savage. So this is from Orwell, Orwell's 1984. Now I will tell you the answer to my question. It is this, the party seeks power entirely for its own sake. We are not interested in the good of others. We are interested solely in power, pure power. We know that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. Power is not a means, it is an end. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. The object of persecution is persecution. The object of torture is torture. The object of power is power. Now you begin to understand me. And this from Brave New World. One believes things because one has been conditioned to believe them. Most men and women will grow up to love their servitude and will never dream of revolution. Yeah. So, the corrupt establishment will do anything to suppress sites like the burning platform from revealing the truth. The corporate media does this by demonetizing sites like mine, by blackballing the site from advertising revenue. If you get value from this site, please keep it running with a donation. This was on Zero Hedge. I will link below to the burning platform. And here you can donate a few dollars to keep this blog going. I thought it was a very good article. It is where we are today with the masses controlled by technology. The adults in this apartment complex want nothing to do with anything that is serious. They just want to play Candy Crush. The links are below.